football, Billy Gill. God bless football, Mike Yeh. God bless football, Mike Fuentes. God bless football, Stugatz. Thank you, Mike Fuentes. You were just seeing if Fuentes was paying attention, right, Mike Yeh? Yeah, I just didn't want to get any flack from you if I didn't say Fuentes. Mm. <laughs> Which you would have. Um, yeah. Very exciting time in the NFL. The draft is quickly approaching. Uh, free agency starts in about a week, so it's an exciting time. Uh, the Jets win every offseason. I don't know if we'll win this offseason because we won off uh, last offseason, and rare does a team win back-to-back offseasons, although the Jets are fully capable of that. Uh, Billy, are you excited? It, it seems like you have a new tight end for the Miami Dolphins. How about that? The Dolphins signed Jonu Smith to a two-year, $10 million deal. I believe this is doubly exciting because the Dolphins could use some help at the tight end position, and he is an FIU Panther. So nice. good times in the life of Billy Gill. We'll see. Because they need a blocking tight end, and he's a good blocking tight end. And I feel like he had his he had his either arguably best or second best uh, year of his career last year in Atlanta. And when you have Jalen Waddell and when you have Tyreek Hill out there kind of causing chaos, all he has to do is catch the ball. He's going to be open and get you some chunks. So we'll see what happens. But I think this is a nice little, a nice little signing for the Dolphins. Pause up, huh? Pot date. It's too good. Hey. Huh? Wow. Pause up. Wow. <laughs> That's why I said it's an exciting day for Billy Gill. Maybe the it Dolphin is. fans aren't excited, but you get an FIU grad, and that's an exciting day for you, Billy. There you go. Yep. Uh, Kirk Cousins, the quarterback. This is interesting because uh, I love this is what I love about free agency and lying season. You get reports that Kirk Cousins is looking for houses in Atlanta. <laughs> the best. <laughs> Just took it right from the rumor mill. That's my favorite kind of rumor. The old wow. he's looking for houses in this area. Oh, my apologies. My apologies. Sorry. Sorry. My apologies. We'll get to the rumor mill in just a second. I should have known that was going to be top right on the rumor mill. He's because looking for buying... houses in the Atlanta area. Yes. It's one of the keys to free agency season. <laughs> Checking out where guys are looking at real estate. <laughs> it's crazy. What if that happens, though? Like, I think Atlanta is pretty good. I don't. Dare I say Atlanta is a quarterback away, but they might actually be a quarterback away, Billy. No, they just lost Janu, so who knows? <laughs> yeah, but Kirk Cousins is the first ballot all famer. So, to you. who who is it that releases that information that the Cousins family is looking for a house? Is that like a <laughs> rival realtor who's out there trying to ruin a sale? Like, who is the one that's doing this? Billy, I would be releasing the information if people cared where you were looking for houses. That's who does it. It's like friend of a friend of a friend. I'd be like the one to like, hey, just so you know, Billy Gill and his wife, they're looking for houses in the Denver area. Just right. saying he's going to. That'd Why, be what would you get out of that? Why would you do that? That's not nice. I'd feel important. Okay. Really? Like, like you know something that, that no one else knows? Somebody, I'd be sitting next to somebody would scroll across the screen on, on like ESPN. I'd be like, see that? That was me. I did I'm that. sources. <laughs> I'm, so- I'm the guy. <laughs> you would reveal yourself as the source. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Just to keep people. that hush hush, you know. <laughs> I like the Not idea of you calling you calling a reporter with like a fake voice, also because the reporter's like, I don't know. We need more than one source. So you're like, Hey, I also heard that Billy Gill and his family are looking for houses in Denver. This is not Mikey A. This is a different source. But I heard that guy is awesome. <laughs> That's how you have to end all your calls. This is not Mikey A. <laughs> well, Mikey A is really awesome. <laughs> you should listen to him. Don't oh, that, don't make that, him call again. That is so, <laughs> that is so funny. But yeah, Bijan Robinson. You have good wide receivers. You lost uh, Jonu Smith. Yeah, so one good wide up. receiver. They have one good wide receiver. They have a good defense. They have a top 10 defense and, you know, a first ballot Hall of Famer looking for a house in, in Atlanta. I mean, the Falcons in a bad division, too. So uh, it's going to be interesting. All right, let's get to new the coach. rumor mill here. What, what happened? New, co- new, new coach as well, Raheem Morris. Yeah, Raheem. Yep, new coach as well. Second yep. go round. Yeah. But listen, right now, Atlanta's winning the offseason. I mean, I don't care what anyone tells me. They're winning the offseason. They're not. Well, maybe the Dolphins are. What have they done? Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. They have about the most the Jets. rumors. You said, <laughs> That's it. You, you said the Jets won last offseason and rare is it that a team wins the offseason two years in a row. I feel like just by getting Aaron back, that's a big thing, right? Like, what else would you want the Jets to do? Uh, it's a good question. I guess perhaps we're about to win back to back offseasons because you're right. I mean, this is the second consecutive offseason we're getting Aaron Rodgers. 
So. Yeah, but but what do you yeah. want to do? Like, is it line play? Like, where where are your holes Ooh. that you need them to address as a Jets um, fan? They need three no, offensive linemen. They do. Three you have Tyron, offensive you have Tyron Smith, who looks like he'll be a free agent tackle. I don't know if the Jets will go after him. Uh, there are some good tackles in the draft, according to Mel Kuyper. Um, but I guess offensive line, like, listen, we're all in on Aaron Rodgers, at least for this season. And so there's a part of me that wants to answer that by saying the Jets need to get their future quarterback in this year's draft. And they probably will, and they'll address that. Uh, but we, you know, you got to be, you got to go about that in a weird way with Aaron Rodgers. You can't get a name that's too big uh, where yeah. Aaron feels threatened uh, that that guy is going to replace him. But I guess offensive line, right, Mikey? And maybe wide receiver, another wide receiver, right? Yeah, I think I think they'll look later in the draft for a wide receiver, but their their left tackle is going to be picked at 10, I think. You think so? Yeah. That's where their first round pick is going. Yeah. Would you want Tyron I think Smith? sign two others. Um, no. Really? Hmm. He, he he he's he's older and he's he gets hurt a lot. I mean, we okay. had that. So does Aaron we Rodgers. Guys that are, <laughs> well, yeah, match. So we match don't need made two in heaven, right? Uh, big news: Mitchell Trubisky goes back to Buffalo. By the way, this is it's huge. <laughs> We're just waiting it's for huge. next Friday, man. <laughs> I need some blockbusters. <laughs> I need Chef there, Billy. Why are you shaking your head there? I mean, uh, he's a serviceable enough backup, right? Mitch he, yeah, he is. Yes, yes, no question about it. By the but way, I, do, I, I, I the argument can be made if Josh Allen hasn't been able to take you to the next thing. If he gets hurt, Mitch, Mitch Trubisky is not going to be the one. You're at you the conference championship. Yeah, I, uh, I do have, and uh, we can get to this later. Matt Sims is going to join us, uh, the brother of Chris Sims. This is a very exciting episode. Uh, is Billy it? is, <laughs> he's going to flirt with Matt Sims and distance himself uh, from Chris Sims. It's going to be interesting. I do have top five quarterbacks who have done just enough where if you bring them in, it causes a quarterback controversy. How about that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> we can get to that later. What do you want to do here, Billy? You want to do the rumor mill? Because Mikey A uh, said before the show that he has a rumor mill ready and I already ruined it. Okay. So well, you ruined the best should... one. Yeah. yeah, we should probably get to the rumor mill so it doesn't go too much further. But you have, I think, two top fives, right? You have that one with the yep. quarterbacks. You also have, I believe, top five coaches who have done just enough not to get fired. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Every year they do just enough to keep their jobs. <laughs> yeah. Let's do the rumor mill. I love the rumor mill. It's one of my so favorite I. segments. I feel yeah. like we should have like a, like a saw or something that we bring in, like a sawmill. You know what I mean? And like every yes. time you're like, your rumors... Not that this is like a cartoon or like that there's crazy grass, but if it was like each one of your rumors would be cut off of like a big piece of wood and it'd fall down and then the next rumor would appear on that wood. You know what I mean? Like a big log. You missed it. The first first episode we did it, uh, Fuentes gave us his top five mils. Wow. Yes, you yeah. did miss that, Billy. Yeah, I'm good. gonna go back Patty and Mills listen. On there. <laughs> You're a liar. <laughs> was Mills Lane on there or no? Oh wow. No, he didn't make it, and that's wow. a bad omission. Wow. Wait, hold on. Let's do this. Next week, Billy, since you said you're gonna go uh, go back and listen, tell us what Fuentes' top five mills are next week, okay? <laughs> yeah, I will be sure to do that. <laughs> Mills Lane is a great one. Holy crap. That was good. Uh, how about how how about uh, speaking of boxing, how ridiculous? Like, what? can we do it? What Mike Tyson is fighting Jake Paul? How ridiculous! I'm there. I'm all for it. I mean, it's great, Billy. You don't want that? Like, you, it's July 20th on Netflix. It's in the middle of the summer. You'll be craving for anything sports related at that point, and they're giving it to you with Mike Tyson returning to the ring. So that's where you got me, which is it's on Netflix <laughs> because if I don't you have, have to, to pay, pay for, for it. it then I will probably be there. If I do have to pay for it, no chance. No chance. I know, but, but Tyson's, Tyson's back, though, man. I know, for free. As I, I, I'm assuming, unless unless somehow Netflix between now and then decides, you know what, we're going to start a pay-per-view service, which would no. be dreadful. No, you can't do that. You can't charge mm -hmm. me for Netflix, and then once I'm inside Netflix paying what it is I'm paying on a monthly basis, you can't charge me more. I mean, you can. That would be great business by then. It, by them, it's something that I would do, uh, to be honest with you. But you can't do that, Billy. You they do. They do try to do that though. So like there, there was a time. I don't get it anymore. But there was a time where there was like it was a screen that would come up, and it would be like 
If you want, for three dollars more, we can give you a more high definition version of Netflix. And it's like, guys, my TV is like six years old. I'm good. I'm going to keep those three dollars a month. Thank you very much. Right. And now there's like a new one that sneaks in where it's like, for seven dollars more a month, yeah, you can share this with like eight people, and it's like, ah, I can already do that. And two, <laughs> I'm not going to be paying you eight dollars more a month. Like, I'm not going to be spending forty dollars a month on Netflix. And the trick with that one is that you have to actually like move it over to not sign up because right. before you just like hit the button and you just go all the way through. And you're like, no, 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 escape, whatever. This one, you have to move it over, or they're going to charge you. So I could see a world, and also like. That's the ESPN plus like UFC model. Like you have to subscribe to ESPN plus. And then if you want to see like a UFC fight, you Correct. then need to buy the pay-per-view on UFC. So it's yes. not unheard of, but I'm not going to be paying extra to see Jake Paul. Billy, fight my kid. I, I'm in a scary situation now because my kids are old enough to work the remote, but yeah. aren't old enough to understand what they're doing. Oh, so they get, I have they're, found they're, a few they're, they're just charging uh, extra card. charges and a few <laughs> yeah. that I'm blaming on them when my wife looks at the bill um, yeah. <laughs> that that are showing up all of a sudden. <laughs> so I had, Mikey, a situation where um, one of my dogs, before we moved into the house we're at now, we lived in an apartment and we knew that it was going to be a short term type thing. So instead of going through and installing the cable and all that stuff, we read we signed up for Sling. Uh, sling tv whatever right so we had a sling account and then when we moved we came over here and we canceled the sling account or paused it or whatever right and then i was going through my bank statements uh not too long ago and i saw that i was paying for sling again and i was like what's going on here and i realized that for two months now i had been paying for sling because my dogs jumped on the remote and re-registered me for sling and my credit card was attached so it. So they un they unfroze my account, and now I'm I I had to then go back and they're like, we'll credit you for that that month. The other month is you know obviously like thirty five days past due. Like we're not going to credit you for that one. But yes, my dogs signed me up for a cable service. Wait, with so the you call control. you called Sling and gave them the dog ate the homework excuse, and they went with it. I blamed I. I blame my kids. I right. said, I have two babies. They grab Smart. the remote, they bite it or whatever. But I know yes. that it was probably the dogs like just jumping around on the couch and they hit the remote. And then all of a sudden it was there because <laughs> I've also I've also gone into the room where there's just a movie playing. And I'm like, what is like Vooby feed free, whatever. And it's like one of those random movie apps. And I'm like, how the hell is this on here? And why am I watching like die hard four how did this happen and it's like oh it's one of those free movie things that comes with a tv and somehow my dogs hit the control and got me into that app and now we're watching some random die hard movie right um uh, mikey i have i have no way of knowing this but uh do you think billy when he says he's talking to his tv and he's saying these things do you imagine him saying them out loud to his tv or like how do you imagine of that? course Yes. Yeah. I, ta I, ta I talk to myself in the car sometimes <laughs> out loud. Do you really? <laughs> yeah. Why? That's how I practice conversations with humans. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's like a pregame for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Conversation never goes in in reality the way it went in practice ever. Not I once. I love it. No, no. You, right. You you drive in. You're like, I'm going to say it this way. I'm going to be forceful. I'm going to do it this way. Then you get there and you cave. I mean, every single time. Everyone's <laughs> got a game plan until someone answers them. <laughs> right. Until mm -hmm. someone's in front of their face. Right? <laughs> Should you go to I'm the really rumor mill? <laughs> I've been doing that with Levitar for years, by the way. Anyway, let's get to the rumor mill. Uh, Mikey A, get us started here. All right. Well, you already ruined the Kirk Cousins looking Sorry. for houses in, in Atlanta, Ooh, which right. means Minnesota's got an opening. And last week, the rumor mill said Sam Darnold might be the guy. But now the rumor mill has changed a little bit. And Trey Lance might be the guy in Minnesota. Wow. That was the so song. He's, that was a song. Thank you. Thanks for the song. Yeah, you're welcome. He's with Dallas, huh? Trey Lance? Yeah. For now. Maybe. According That's to the rumor it. I, mill, it might be Minnesota. I, I want him to work out somewhere so badly. If for no other reason, it will make Kyle Shanahan look bad. Like <laughs> you traded oh. away what? <laughs> I mean, uh, that'd be interesting. I, I can't see uh, the Vikings going that route. I just I would think that quarterbacks would be interested in signing with the Vikings, wouldn't you? I mean, with that coach and that play caller, sure. That wide and, receiver. And Justin Jefferson, absolutely. Yes. TJ yeah. Hawkinson. Well, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's going to come up in the rumor mills, but there is a quarterback out there who's basically for free Super Bowl winning quarterback. Also, Stugatz, mm-hmm. I, I have this. I have in front of me ESPN ranked the top 100 available players, and oh, Kirk wow. Cousins is number two on that list. Wow. Uh, yeah, wow. Who's number one? There's someone more well, valuable than Kirk Cousins? Well, as the rumor mill goes, I can update you where those people are on the list. All sure. right. All right. Keep it going, Mikey. Well, Russell Wilson, and everybody knows that he's interested in Pittsburgh, but that's not where the rumor mill stops. The rumor mill digs deeper. And uh-huh. there's another team that's interested in Russell Wilson. New England. Not only are they mm. interested in Russell Wilson, the Patriots are, but pairing him with Calvin Ridley, according to the rumor mill. Yeah. We got to work on the saw. <laughs> mm. I'm trying. I've been working all day. It's tough. I, listen, you're doing your best. I'm not blaming you. Thank you. <laughs> it's as good a saw as I've heard someone do. <laughs> According to ESPN, Calvin Ridley is the number 14 available free agent, and Russell Wilson is the number 19 available free agent. Wow. I have a rumor mill that I heard, Mikey, and I don't know if you heard this, but before oh, we get away please. from New England, I heard Joe Flacco may land in New England. <laughs> I heard Joe Flacco wants to stay in Cleveland. That's, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> yeah. I heard he wants to stay in Cleveland, and he might be on my top five quarterbacks, where if you bring him in, you have yourself a quarterback controversy. So, <laughs> Wow. Well, don't don't say that. I said he might be. He also might not be, Billy. You know, no. That's true. Okay. Yeah. According to the rumor. Man. Wait, so you Mikey, I kind of like that for New England. So you're telling because they're going to draft a quarterback here. They have the second or third pick in the draft, right? So they'll take one of those guys. What pick do they have, Mike? They have three, and they could they move have three. Back. They could Somebody's move back, but they could also take the best of you know whoever's left over from the top two. Let's say it's Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels. They'll get May from North Carolina. So you have Russell Wilson on the cheap for a year or two while May is getting ready to eventually take over and be your quarterback for the next, hopefully, 10 to 15 years. Uh, that's going to work out, and the Jets are going <laughs> to be miserable for another 10 years. That's uh, that's great. Uh, what else on the rumor mill? Uh, according to the rumor mill, uh, if Russell Wilson does go to the Steelers, he might have one less weapon there. Deontay Johnson might be on his way out in Ooh, Pittsburgh wow. via trade. Well- but only if Russell According goes the there. But only if Russell goes there. Mm. But only if Russell goes there. Yeah. Uh, no, I think if they keep what they have, he might leave too. But the way you painted it was like if if Russell goes, Deontay yeah. leaves. Like Deontay I try doesn't and weave like a Russell. Thread through all right. of these rumors, you know. I got Just, it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Russell Wilson on the Steelers, man, that would be. That's intriguing to me. Like if Mike Tomlin can have these seasons with these quarterbacks, he might be able to do something with Russell Wilson. I'm not saying he get Billy is shaking his head because I've been on this Russell Wilson thing all week on the main show saying I'd rather have Russell at two million than two at fifty five million. It's just like, wow. You think this is Russell Wilson that was at the Super Bowl? This isn't the same guy. It's not. No, no it's not. It's not. Uh, but two has never been to one. Russell's been to two. That's so, true. Yeah. It's been a Tua. <laughs> one more? <laughs> Tua. Hey. Yeah, one more rumor mill. Let's go. One more. All right. Let's do a draft one. Uh, Denver is trying to trade up already to get one of the quarterbacks. People seem mm. to think it might be J.J. McCarthy, who the Giants are also interested in, mm. according to the rumor mill. <laughs> yeah. What kind of saw do you think in this mill? I'm I'm thinking like one of those big giant like circular saw type things. Yes. That push down, right? Yes. That's the type of saw that it is. Yeah, a woodcutter. Yeah, like yeah. the old timey ones from like the yes. turn of the century that were like floor to ceiling. Yeah, I'm thinking like mm-hmm. a 1930s Bugs Bunny cartoon that comes down and like, yes. yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah, one cool. of those. Not a yeah. simple table saw. All right, we're all on the same page then. Is that what you're trying to do, Fuentes? Yes, poorly. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> We all knew it. <laughs> Are we going to address the rumor or no? Just leave the rumor. Nah, just there. talking You're about sauce. <laughs> Whatever. Matt Sims. Billy, you excited? Chris Sims' his brother is joining us next. Uh, let's. Uh, I'm hopeful. We'll see. <laughs> all right. Matt Sims next. Billy, Mikey A, this is exciting. Chris Sims' his brother is joining us. We are very excited about this. We were discussing whether or not uh, he knows who we are. Mikey A, do you think that he knows who we are? 
There isn't a chance he doesn't. You know Chris has talked about us around the dinner table. I'm a little <laughs> shocked, though, that we're having his brother on before we had his father on, because he's been promising us his father for a long time. Well, I had his dad on <laughs> once. We had him on Stupidity, who knows your father better, and he was cursing at Chris the entire time. Uh, Matt, what was it like growing up in that f***ing household? Seriously. Oh. <laughs> Uh, you know, with that intro, basically that that sums up how my childhood was. You know, it's just uh, a little chaotic all over the place, uh, a lot of trash talking, a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, I I'm grateful that I was around, uh, obviously, my, my father and brother growing up and uh, being eight years younger than my brother, too. I didn't win many battles, um, but it definitely <laughs> taught me to be a tough, resilient dude. That's for sure. How often did you guys fight? Uh, well, I mean, since he was eight years older than me, I wouldn't even say that we really fought. He just beat the crap out of me. Right. Mm -hmm. So, right. um, you know, it just taught me how to be uh, super tough. And, you know, fortunately, too, that's, uh, you know, one of the DNA strands too that my father naturally passed down to me, too. So has he ever <laughs> mentioned Billy Gill to you? Have you heard that name before? No chance. Of course. Absolutely. Ah, All the time. You I, know? And not, not in like the greatest light, but you know, <laughs> yes. <laughs> what does he say about Billy? Please tell. <laughs> you know, hey, uh, I, I'm trying to keep it like more of like a PG mm -hmm. style here, you know, so I don't want to go down down that road because once we start going down that road, it's over. Matt, uh, <laughs> are, the, are the Thanksgiving games as tense at your household as Chris makes them sound? He says that it used to be a thing. He takes it very seriously, but he's been getting angry over the past couple of years because your sister, I guess, shows up late and then the those kids aren't involved and they want the game to be after dark or whatever. So are they as intense as he makes them sound? Dude is such a diva. You know, he is, uh, he thinks he's QB one in the family, but he's like more like QB three. Uh -huh. um, and, and really by the time the game starts, he's already been a few deep into the, the cocktails is ready. So he doesn't even really know exactly what the hell is going on. He just complains a lot, you know, like he's a, like he's a top quarterback. Is he aware <laughs> that your dad, big has two rings he's qb1 he's always qb1 right oh he's always qb1 you know but big phil now is kind of like uh got that veteran status where he's moved from the you know automatic quarterback position to where now he's he's like the the ceo he's like roger goodell essentially for the game you know he's officiating he's making up rules as we go he's calling touchdowns he's changing he's reviewing plays so uh he, he's in that role right now while me and my brother are i guess uh you know, trying to run the circus like like Barnum does. <laughs> you, can, you can check Matt and fill out on Sims Complete on Believe. Uh, Matt, I have a question for you because for years your brother Chris has said that your father's nickname is Big F***. We are not certain that that's an actual nickname that anyone but him calls him. You just called him Big Phil. So now I think more so that's something that Chris just calls your dad. Uh, yes. Yeah, so the, the OG term was Big Phil, right? So I coined the phrase calling him Big Phil. You know, you've met him before, too. Big square dude, right? You know, uh, all legs and arms and all that, right? So I started calling him Big Phil. And then that morphed slowly into, you know, Big Effer, which mm -hmm. then morphed into uh, Big And that's uh, definitely something that comes from my my brother. And and that's probably because my, my father just kicks his ass in, you know, every board game possible, um, you know, when, when they're playing cards, too. I think my, my brother's like in $20,000 in debt to my father through cards right now. <laughs> <laughs> but your dad loves big f***er. He does, right? I mean, he totally does. Yeah, he, he won't exactly <laughs> like say that it's his favorite nickname, but there's no doubt that they're, you know, you earn that title uh, through, uh, through, through some good reasons, right? Because you're usually dominating. <laughs> Sims complete with Phil Sims, the Believe Network, as Billy mentioned. Why is your dad doing a podcast with you and not Chris? Uh, well, because Chris is just too damn expensive, man. He's too big time, right? <laughs> so uh, I was the free agent, and it was one of those things that we were, you know, it was kind of like a Thanksgiving thing, right? We were sitting there talking. And uh, I, I looked at him, I was like, man, I was like, you, you should do more podcast format type of shows because uh the cbs studio stuff that he does really doesn't do enough justice for him and his knowledge and his love and his passion for the game so i thought that this was a great outlet for him to just kind of show the fans and and kind of you know go more into the weeds of all the stuff and the homework that he he has right you know locked up in that brain because uh, the studio show just doesn't have enough time to really get into the nitty gritty of football the way that he would like to. Plus, TV in general just doesn't allow your personality to come out, right? So he could do that more so yeah. on the podcast, correct? Because you got a great personality. No doubt. Yeah. Oh, man. And the, I think that my most fun that I have on the podcast is just kind of hearing the, you know, the PG version of the Giants stories and that team. 
you know, he does a great job because I've heard the, the original stories and he does a great job of toning them down to making sure that they don't come across as uh, too absurd through the podcast because there's uh, there's some classics there and, and rightfully so, too, with all those cast of characters that they had in those teams. That sounds terrible. I'd rather get the not PG version. That's more ridiculous. <laughs> oh, I know. But you know what? He he's been in the studio for so long, too, that he has a hard time kind of letting letting that part of him, you know, mm. out, out of its cage that right. way. But so you have to pull it out very, of him, man. He's very You're careful that way and reserved. Yeah. You have to pull it out of him, though. You're his son. Say, Dad, just trust me. Tell the story exactly yeah. the way you told us and just let it fly, man. No doubt, no doubt. Well, I'm taking like the Greg Schiano approach. You know, I'm just I'm gonna keep chopping, you know, and eventually we'll get there to the core of Big Phil. Really, Schiano, that, that's where you went right there. That, that is amazing. What was it like playing for the Jets? Was it was it a misery? What was it like? I mean, uh, for me, I mean, it was awesome, dude. I really I loved every second of it. Being a New Jersey guy, making the team through a rookie mini camp, um, you know, that was one of those things where like they were maybe gonna draft me in the seventh round. Then they were going to sign me, you know, as a free agent. And then they didn't sign me. And then I went to there as a rookie mini camp and, uh, you know, balled out, made it the hard way, got cut that year, actually, because that was the whole circus of Sanchez and Tebow and all that. Then uh, was lucky enough to come back the next year and to earn a spot. And uh, it, it really was just awesome being from that local area. My father being a giant, too, uh, to be a Jet uh, was was really a special moment for me and my family, and, and I enjoyed every single minute of it. Who's the quarterback uh, from this year's draft that you think is going to be the best? Man, it, it's really hard for me to go away from Caleb Williams and what I've seen from him on film. I was one of those supporters of Justin Fields here late in the season saying, you know, Chicago, stick with Justin Fields, build around him. And then I started watching the Caleb Williams film a little bit more closely, and I was like, nah, you gotta, you got to take Caleb Williams you got to trade Justin Fields and move on and start with Caleb Williams because this guy is uh, is really an unbelievable player. The ability that he has to make plays in the pocket, his arm talent, his movement, which I think is very underrated too. I mean, this guy really is uh, one of the best QB prospects that I think I, I, I've ever seen. I, I haven't been doing this as long as my father and my brother, but um, he's the closest one that I think we've seen to being a Mahomes-like of talent. Uh, right, right from the get go too, and his his ability too to protect the football. Yeah, the fact that the guy I think's only thrown nine total interceptions in like the past two years is absolutely ridiculous because we know USC was was very heavy and pass dominant that way with their offense. So I think Caleb Williams is by far number one, and uh, number two is probably Jaden Daniels and what he's done. Um, his skill set is truly uh, one of one. And uh, I, I think he's really done a great job of kind of showing everybody that he's he's NFL ready here recently, too. You know, it's interesting. One of the names I, I, I don't really hear as we head into the draft is Michael Penix. I hear about him late in the first round, maybe a second rounder. To me, that guy, lefty, big hands, like to, a crazy athlete. To me, that guy should be like a top 10 pick. It's crazy. Yeah, I, I wonder if the injuries and all that stuff really are something that certain teams are afraid of, right? And maybe his lack of ability uh, ability to, to move and, and create like on the ground like some of the other guys do maybe hurts him in, the, in this round. But uh, he is definitely someone that I, I really value very highly in this draft. Um, I think him and Bo Nix are kind of tied for that three position right now. And it really just kind of depends on what you value more at the position. But Michael Penix is... Uh, listen, I mean, Caleb's got kind of everything, every box checked, but Michael Penick's ability to throw from the pocket and with people surrounding him and to move in the pocket is, is super special. It is truly unique. And yeah, the lefty, sometimes it looks a little funny, like my brother used to look a little funny too, but uh, the Duke can absolutely sling it. And I wouldn't be shocked if uh, there was one of these random teams here late, like in the first round that took a shot on him, even with the injuries and all that stuff too, because he's got a ton of experience. He's tough. He's resilient. Uh, he's a really good leader, and I think uh, at the end of the day, the most important thing is being able to throw the ball effectively from the pocket uh, in the NFL, and he has shown uh, recently in the past three years of his career that he can do that. Who would you say is the best player in the draft? Total player, like out of everybody? Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, I would still have to go with with Caleb Williams. I really do think that really? Caleb is uh, yeah. is a different breed, and, and like what I just said with Jaden and some of those other guys, like, you know, they would be higher up as a top 10 draft pick or the top quarterback available. But Caleb Williams, I think, really is uh, a special talent. Now, I think the growth period for him in the NFL is going to be a little different just because, 
you know, the NFL, it's a little bit more situational football. You got to adjust to the game, the style. You know, there's bigger people, there's faster people, there's better coaches, right? So he's going to have some bumps and bruises his first year for sure. Uh, but he is, to me, you know, just like C.J. Stroud a year ago, bar none to me, numero uno as far as the best player available. Did you have any issues or do you understand why other people would have issues with him not wanting to be part of the physicals or participate in some of those things? Um, no, I, th those are things to me that I think the NFL really kind of needs to to rethink in the future. Now, the, the one thing is kind of like the opt out stuff. I think they have to be a little bit more cautious of, um, you know, and, and there's really, you know, it, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of stress for these guys to go through this process. Right. And I think Caleb understands that only one team can draft him. And why do I need to give all my information to all 32 teams? You know, I think that's something that, you know, kind of needs to take a look at as far as the NFL, the big picture. You know, why can't we just trust one doctor to evaluate the player and then give that report to, to every team in the league or something like that, as opposed to 32 different doctors looking at you and, and tugging your legs and doing all that crazy stuff, too. You know, it's just it kind of wears out the people during the process, you know. The workouts and stuff, that's something that I think, you know, should be thought of a little bit more in the future because, you know, it, it's it's one thing to go and to be interviewed, but then it's another thing, too. There could have been someone else there that would have opted in to performing at these workouts, to getting them those looks in front of these people. So that's uh, something that I think they have to keep in mind for the future. Matt, what do you make of J.J. McCarthy? Because I've heard everything from he's the third quarterback taken in the top 10, 12, to he's probably not even a day one guy. Yeah, he, he is really one of those guys where he is everywhere on just where the spectrum of the draft board goes, right? I mean, and and it's interesting. When you watch his film, you like a lot of the things that he does. He's athletic. He's strong. He's tough. He's the only one that's probably run like a very NFL-type-like offense already, under center, play action, passing, all that kind of stuff from Michigan. So he's been taught like an NFL QB already. So I think a lot of scouts will like that. He's got a strong arm. He can throw the football outside the numbers extremely well, too. Um, I think the biggest thing that a lot of teams will have the concern with, too, is um, just making sure that he doesn't have a ton of experience just dropping back and throwing it the way that Michael Penix, Caleb Williams, Drake May, and all them. Um, but at the same time, he's done a really good job of getting quality experience you know, I, my my comp that I made to my my father was like he's kind of like Mark Sanchez with the Jets. You know, it's like he's only going to throw it 18 times a game and he's got to be like super efficient with those 18 attempts. And and JJ's really done a good job of that. He maximizes every rep that he's had. And he is someone that if someone wants to take a chance on him, that's great. But he's not going to be your day one starter. He is a guy that's going to going to have to sit on the bench and learn and, and kind of be grown into that position uh, very similar to a Jordan Love type of player. So you had C.J. Stroud before the draft last year because your brother told us about four or five weeks in, he's the best rookie quarterback he's ever seen. You nailed that before the draft last year. Yeah, when my father and I were going through it the first time that we did this podcast, you know, of course, um, you know, we went through all the QBs and and we saw positives to a lot of them. We, we really liked Anthony Richardson a lot, but C.J. Stroud to us just like was just the constant like, we saw his skill set transferring over to the NFL so easily. His arm strength, his arm flexibility, his mobility in the pocket to move and create and to reset to throw, uh, I think was, was definitely different than a lot of the other people. And, you know, and my father will always say this too, you know, size is a talent. And we thought that he was big and strong enough to really fit into that NFL pocket right away. And, uh, and I think that he, he showed that to us throughout the season this year that that he can do that he stood in the pocket extremely tall and strong and delivered some some unbelievable passes and uh I, I even thought that he you know was was an MVP candidate halfway through the year because of how well he was performing what's the uh who's the guy that haunts your brother the most is it Zach Wilson is that it is that the guy the guy he thought was going to be great <laughs> that turned out to be a disaster <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I think the good thing is, is that like we can always just say it's the Jets' fault, right? And yes. everyone will be like, "Yeah, you're right." Yeah. So, <laughs> right. Um, you know, I, I said that about Joe Flacco this year. I thought Joe Flacco was totally washed up, and then I realized he was just playing for the Jets. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I think that's just a good answer for all anything. Uh, the <laughs> yeah, the you're better. right. Yes, you are right. <laughs> the better quarterback today, today, okay, Matt, today, you or Chris? Let's do it like this, Matt. 
in Thanksgiving Day, if the kids are choosing their quarterbacks and the kids are choosing their teams, are they choosing you or are they choosing Chris? They choose Phil, but Phil's never home. Yeah. I mean, right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they definitely got to pick me, though, too, because I, I feel like I'm like the Jackie Moon of, of our family. Like, I could play QB. I could play safety. I could play receiver. I could play running back. Chris is – he's one-dimensional, man. Mm-hmm. He's just going to stand back there yep. like a statue and throw, yeah. you know, so – we're, I'm, I can do a little bit of everything. I got to play some defense, play some offense, you know, and add a little physicality and speed to the game. So that that's my <laughs> advantage over Chris right now. What are you laughing at? We love all things Sims around here. What are you laughing I'm, at? I'm laughing He's exactly at like his brother. You <laughs> adding physicality to a yeah. game with children. <laughs> totally, totally. No, I, I'm that guy for sure. You know, like uh, I told one person, they're like, hey, what's the difference between, you know, like the the Sims Thanksgiving game and the, and the Manning Thanksgiving game? I'm like, The Sims uh, Thanksgiving game is totally more physical. You know, bodies are being thrown around. I don't care if the kid's seven or what. He's getting he's getting laid out. (laughs) The Mannings are playing two hand touch. I mean, (laughs) that's right. That's right. They're playing seven on seven and we're getting in the trenches, you know, just like how Bill Parcells taught us back in the day. (laughs) Uh, Who's the better son? Not now. Just the better son in general. You or Chris? Uh, I would definitely say that Big Phil, you know, definitely sees me as a as a a lesser thorn in his ass consistently, (laughs) which I think he appreciates. So uh, I don't annoy him as much, uh, but he is he is number one. He is the first child. So you know how that goes. Right. So Christopher thinks highly of himself. And of course, uh, you know, mom and dad are always going to love the first child a little bit, too. (laughs) Uh, That's so great. Sims complete with Phil Sims. Uh, Phil made you put his name on the on the title of the show. Is that what happened there? (laughs) that's right that's right you know um it it was just one of those things man i'm just happy you know and and like it's so corny but at the same time it is true like to sit there and to participate in that world with my father is really special and uh you know these are these are like really cool father-son moments that i think that we're sharing too with people and uh you know i know that might come across as corny but like it is special to me yes he means so much to our family he means so much to me as an individual so um, it, it really is uh, amazing to kind of have that experience with him and to talk ball and and obviously talk a little shit too on top of that. <laughs> no, it's fantastic. It really is. I'm wondering, though, is there anything annoying about doing a podcast with your dad? Like, technically? Oh, totally. Like a, yeah. I, I mean, there, there's a, a laundry list, dude. I mean, the dude <laughs> is always complaining. He, he secretly doesn't even want to do it with me. He really just wants to sit there and talk in front of the camera by himself the entire time, right? Because right. he, he just gets so excited and amped up about it. And then, uh, yeah, he like has these producer meetings with me where he's like, hey, let's do this. Uh, I want to do this at the, you know, here. And then when the show starts, he just goes off the wall and just does whatever he wants. So I don't even know why the hell we waste these hours meeting all the time because he just, you know, he, he does what a typical quarterback one would do, man. He just does whatever the hell he wants. He does the hands thing too, Bill. I mean, you know that yeah. Billy. He does the hands thing. Like, your brother gets all fired up. His hands start flailing in all different directions. He's crazy. Oh, it's it's such a quarterback trait though, too, right? Once we get going, like it, it, it's hard to stop, man. So, uh, you know, what's the saying? You know, like the the preacher can we can write shorter sermons, man, but I just get too lazy to stop. So once we start talking football, it just, it goes, bro. Do you find yourself, do you find your brother uh, at all getting jealous because you're doing this podcast with dad and he's not? Oh, dude, totally. He's already ah. recruited him. Ah. He, my father told me, he goes, you know, hey, you should, you should, uh, you know, come up and, and do the show with us, you know, and, and start doing this with, with Sims on button more. And I'm like, dude, what the hell? You're just going to cut me out of this like that? So, uh, you know, hey, I don't know what Chris is doing, man. Mm-hmm. He's starting like this little civil war right now with our family and I don't like it, man. Well, so I'm going to have to put him in a headlock soon. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to put him in a headlock. I love how you guys solve problems. <laughs> Oh, totally. Yeah. The, there's no debating. There's right. there's no debating. There's no intellectual thought process. We, we get into the Coliseum <laughs> and we figure it out. <laughs> how many times, I asked Chris this uh, once, how many times did you come home and Lawrence Taylor was just hanging around the house? I mean, yeah, for me, not as often when, when he was growing up. So I would say, you know, since I'm eight years younger than my brother, like they were kind of, uh, my father was at a different time in his career. Um, so I was only about five years old when he retired. So you know, my my one great memory, I think, really is, is, uh you know, yeah, I definitely came home and like Lawrence Taylor was there at the house. And at the time, like I was young, so I didn't even give a damn who he was. I didn't even know who he was. I was probably just like more interested in playing in the backyard or doing something else like that. But, um, you know, the moment, though, of uh, my my father's jersey being retired uh, at, you know, old Giant Stadium 
and uh, Lawrence Taylor running that little go route down the middle of the field and him completing it to it was pretty awesome. And, uh, you know, just at the time, how special it was for them, you know, as, as teammates and, and my father's career to be retired, um, it, it really was special. And then, you know, now being more mature too, knowing that LT might have, might have had a few drinks or two before he ran that route and <laughs> caught that last pass from Big Bill. Uh, I just have more appreciation for uh, for the baller that he is. How many times has your dad made you sit down and watch the 1986 Super Bowl with him? <laughs> Not at all. That's <laughs> that's something that my father, uh, my brother, and I we talk about a lot. Like Big Phil is uh, he's he's too damn humble with his own career. Um, you know, my brother and I we we totally think that he should be a Hall of Fame quarterback for you know, for a multitude of reasons. And, uh, you know, Big Phil is a humble guy. He really doesn't, uh, you know, show off or, or, you know, blow too much about those moments. He, he obviously reflects on them, obviously, with great with great care and just, you know, trying to share and instill that wisdom that he learned from those years. But, uh, you know, he, he definitely uh, doesn't show off enough, I feel like, or, or really promote himself as, as the great quarterback that that I believe he really is. Matt, so it was a big story in the NFL this week. Jason Kelsey officially retired. Earlier this weekend, Johnny Manziel kind of hinted that he's not retired, which is weird because he hasn't been in the NFL for a long time. He's boycotting the Heisman ceremony. Previously on this show, Mike Golick Jr. announced his retirement. Did you ever, Matt, officially retire? Oh. Or are you still available if the right team is looking? Or would you like to officially retire? Like, what's your status? I mean, you laugh at Joe Flacco. I exactly mean, right. right. And right. there's there's rumors yeah. that Joe Flacco may go to New England next season. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude, I you know what? I, I am not going to retire on your show. Okay. But, uh, Damn. You know, that's We're for sure. Out there. We his own show, Billy. It, I know. But either own, way, we've made news. Right. He's available But he has his season. own platform. I'm yeah. available. Yeah. That's but, right. Yeah, right. I'm available. So if you need a four-string quarterback, you know, in your QB room, to tell you, you know, how to maybe do it better or whatever. I don't know. But, uh, you know, football has been been awesome, have so many great memories and been a lot been a part of a lot of really bad teams, but a lot of part of really good football teams. And, uh, you know, now just uh, coaching, doing this media stuff too, trying to share, you know, all those lessons that I learned with, with as many people as possible. Uh, to enjoy the game the way that I did and the way that my family does. Matt, you have to be better than Tim Boyle. I'm sorry. I mean, you're you're better than Tim Boyle. I'm just going to say it. You're better I, than Tim I Boyle. I like to think yeah. so. Right. I like mm -hmm. to think so, man. I, right. I like to think that I, I'm better than a few dudes that are out there, you know, but... <laughs> Name them. Who uh, are they? Hey, Who are you better uh, than? We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Zach God's got to play it for me, man, so we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> you're better than Zach. Say it. You're better than Zach Wilson. I mean, you are. Oh, oh man. Yeah, you know what? Uh, yeah. I'll challenge I'll challenge uh, Zach to, uh, to a throwing duel one day here in Jersey. How about yes. that? <laughs> yeah. On your own platform, though, not ours, right? Yeah. That's right. Hey, you're, it doesn't matter. I don't, you know, I don't give a damn. Let's just go. Let's do it. Right. All right. I'm glowing. I think Billy's glowing. I know Mikey A is glowing because we love the Sims family. I'm thinking about replacing Chris with Matt. What do you think? Wow. I mean, I mean, he's great. He's great. Look at him. He's shaking his wow. hand. He wants it. I like it. I like the way this team thinks. Yeah. I appreciate that. Well, it seems like Chris is all about Chris and Phil's all about Phil. I mean, mm. someone needs to be about you. Yeah. Right. Hey, I appreciate that, man. I, you know, and that's what I am, man. I'm, I'm, I'm a team player for my family. Even though I made the Jackie Moon reference earlier, you know, I, yeah. I, I do what I need to do to, to get it done for the, for the greater good of the Sims clan. In fairness <laughs> to your brother, we'll take you about two seasons and start hating us, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why so hey, long? That's all right. And I'm also, I'm just so new to this media world. I don't even know uh, enough anyway. So, you know, you got me right now when I'm still green. I don't know any better. So let, let's keep it rolling. Okay, you're with us now, okay? Uh, Believe Network, check it out. Sims Complete with Phil Sims. Uh, Matt Sims, we appreciate the time, man. This was a lot of fun and... Uh, uh, we'll share some of it with your brother. I'm not going to lie to you, okay? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. I can't wait to hear, uh, you know, what he says. I, of course, there's always three sides to the story. Yeah. And uh, knowing my brother and my father, uh, everything that I just told you will probably seem like a complete lie when you talk to those other two. So <laughs> look forward to seeing that report. It will absolutely come back to haunt you. We appreciate it, man. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank All you right. so much for having me. I All appreciate right. it. You got it, man. Talk soon. You guys, yeah. I was gonna say, and we're back, but I didn't because they were you were expecting it, and I didn't want to be like the predictable, you yeah. Know, I guy feel that a little just let does down. The thing. He threw the curveball. He did yeah. really. Yeah. I feel a little yeah. let down. Yeah. Oh. Can you just say it for us? And we're back.
<laughs> we are back. <laughs> I feel like maybe that's an in studio thing. We're not in the studio right now. So, no. anyways, um, all right, we have a number of top fives to go to. I don't know what else we have, Mikey. Did you have anything else? No, right? The rumor mill was no. I'm good. We... Okay, good. I didn't want to miss out on anything. So, guys, I uh, I in the last segment, well, in the last break, really after the last segment, I came up with a top five of my own. I know you have two top fives. Mine is a top five reasons why I like Matt Sims more than Chris Sims. If you would like that, <laughs> I am willing to bump. I'm all not top on board five. with this. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, not on board with this. I don't really? care what you're on board with. I'm totally you sucking up to Chris Sims. Oh, now, I can't. No, of course, I'm. I'm sucking up to Chris Sims. But uh, listen, I want to hear it. But all right, okay. I'm team Chris Sims. I have why? two top fives. I have two top fives. Is Billy mentioned why he's so mean to Billy? Why are you team Chris Sims? Loyalty. Yeah. Loyalty. Okay. Chris Sims has been on <laughs> since we started this thing. Right, but who was on this week? Mm. Fair. Boom. <laughs> what have you done for me lately? I mean, did you ask Chris? No. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Trying to leave him alone so he can do his regular job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Believe me, I've been tempted to text him. I am willing, by the way, to uh, get rid of both. I'll save them till next week. Okay. Because this top five means more to this audience and this show than any top five we've ever done. Yeah. These are your top five reasons. <laughs> Over the last 20 some odd minutes, you have decided to come up yeah. with a top five reasons you like Matt Sims more than Chris Sims. Yeah, I could do a quick too. Uh, you, you can take so your can time to with this. This is this is glorious. We've been waiting for this top five forever. I mean, that's great. Well, I mean, we've only had Matt Sims on for like 10 minutes. So that's Since true. We found out there was a Matt Sims. Totally fair point. We have him, but we're waiting for it forever. I didn't know there was a Matt Sims till we interviewed him. You're right, Mikey. Yeah. I had no idea. Billy put together a top five. So we've been waiting for two minutes. I mean. All right. Number five. Yes. He doesn't curse as much as Chris Sims. That's for sure. No one does. A dream. Oh, so easy. <laughs> yeah. The edit was yeah, so much is, easier than with right. Chris. <laughs> all right, I'll give you that one. I'll give all you right. that. One. Oh wow, you're coming around. <laughs> Number yet. four doesn't yes. talk about weed constantly. Uh, I don't like that. Not the same as the cursing, but it was so much that I'd have to clean up some of it because it's like, Chris, come on. You're we're talking more. This is wasting more time than we can't even get to football. Anyways, number right. three. Yes. Better looking than Chris Sims. Oh, wow. wow, that's a shot. <laughs> wow. Is it? Am, oh. am I am I wrong? You're not, mm. <laughs> Mikey. Mikey, abstain, abstain. <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> All right, number, number two. two. Billy. Yes, he was nicer to me. Yep. No doubt. It's impossible to be meaner to you than Chris Sims is. So. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. I Not that you. I hate it, but sometimes, you know, someone being nice to you feels good. You know, he goes, yeah. And, and listen, Chris goes, I know he loves you, but he goes too far sometimes. I mean, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's fine. Anyways. And the number one reason I liked Matt Sims more than Chris Sims. He was on time. <laughs> wow. Every single week, this Chris Sims has to reschedule. And we have to move things around on him. Just sitting around waiting for 20 minutes sometimes for him to just decide to show up. Matt yeah. Sims early was yeah. early even yeah yeah i want to take a shot at matt sims but i shouldn't i mean chris has a job <laughs> wow jeez i so want to take matt. a shot but i'm not going to take shot but he's better Way to go <laughs> he's better he and he's nicer to philly <laughs> no he, he does have a job he does the podcast dad, yeah with the podcast with his dad right all right he's... do your top fives real quick we have a little bit of time left all right you want my top fives real quick uh first is top versus top five nfl coaches who do just enough every year to keep their jobs. Okay. Number five, Doug Peterson. <laughs> <laughs> Number f even though he got fired a year after winning the Super Bowl in Philadelphia. Yeah, he won the Super Bowl yeah. and he missed yeah, the playoffs. Yeah. So <laughs> Number four, Sean McDermott. <laughs> This is his last stand. <laughs> you think? <laughs> yeah. I thought that last year, too. So Right. He'll be back. Uh, number three, John Harbaugh. <laughs> okay. That one's weird. I mean, he's won one Super Bowl. It was a long, long time ago. It wasn't with Lamar Jackson. He does just enough to keep his job. He does. All right. Number two. Mike McCarthy. <laughs> Did just right, enough no. in Green Bay to keep his job. One Super Bowl with Aaron was not enough. Number he one. Just, number one, Mike Tomlin. Wow. <laughs> wow. 